Sir, your thoughts on this budget? Well, thank you. I think it's been a fascinating morning. These are things uh, which were only thought of and one never imagined that the public sector, banks, two of them, would uh, go to the block and uh, FDI insurance, private sector comes in more than uh, foreign foreign direct investment comes in up to 70%. These are big game changers. The fiscal deficit, uh, which is, you know, it appears to be a large figure, but if you see the uh, trajectory, I think it's entirely in alignment with uh, the expectations of the common man that the government would come in with big expenditure. Hmm. Uh, and that push is is the animal spirit, as they say, hmm. have been unleashed. Uh, I would give uh, a lot of, I would salute the team that has assiduously uh, thought through this. I think all the places are in, uh, pieces are in place. And the transparency in the budget, the kind of disclosures that have been made are remarkable. Hmm. So it's an amazing uh, document. Uh, one is still going through the fine print, yeah. but I think it is really uh, the impact is there and it's as good as one could have imagined it to be. Well, in a way, if you were to see that uh, it's, it's a long line of dominoes and the government has set certain triggers in between to try and keep giving it pace. But if there is a break anywhere in between, like if there is a slow thin growth, uh, slow slowdown as far as the growth is concerned, growth rate is concerned, or if the vaccination drive is not completed, that's also critical. Uh, all of India doesn't get inoculated in record time, sir. Then we have a problem. You're absolutely right. The implementation has always been a kind of a bogey. But if you see the track record over the last uh, uh, year, mm. I think the uh, assignments that the government and its agencies took on, they have delivered. Mm. They have been uh, cracking the whip. They have been working. They have been toiling. And my sense is the... Uh, you know, this country always uh, rises to the occasion. Mm. You see the kind of vaccinations we have done in 15 days, which even a country like U.S. did in a month. So our uh, trajectory of uh, performance uh, cannot mm. be doubted. Of course, it needs a bit of a crisis to kind of get the get the things going, but it has never been as bad as, as it was a, a, a quarter or two before. And I think the private sector is is now quite clear that this government is uh, setting the roadmap hmm. for a, a, a longer, uh, uh, you know, so this is not a one-off budget. Hmm. This is a part of the whole uh, trajectory, and you're absolutely right, growth just cannot slip. Hmm. There is no way we can lose sight of the five trillion economy and our desire to, you know, do a double-digit growth hmm. consistently hmm. for a decade. So hmm. This budget and what happened, to, uh, you know, the last 10 months, the pandemic, in a way, it was a massive challenge. And I think we have risen to the occasion. It's now for the state governments and the uh, district level, then you can see the district aspirational program, mm. very, uh, you know, important place that has got, because that is showing that the, that the way to intervene with data-driven policy rather than a very anecdotal policy. The 15 Finance Commission also, I'm sure, has incentivized the states to perform. Right. And the granularity of the data that is now in the public domain is impacting the sustainable developmental goals. So it's, it's all well uh, brought in together. Mm. And I have no doubt that we will rise to the occasion of mm. implementing all these programs. The Prime Minister just a short while ago said that the soul, at the soul of this budget is the Gaon and the Kisan. Now, how much more does the government have to yield or do to convince the Kisan or the protests? Or should the government just now push? Because somewhere when it says that it will uh, pass a bill and then stall its implementation and it will hold back certain other laws which are critical in terms of reform, it also uh, reflects on some lack of uh, uh, you know, courage of conviction. Uh, you know, I can completely, you know, see that that uh, the dissonance is coming from, uh, you know, either uh, uh, people not being well uh, informed. So maybe there is need for better articulation of the developmental impact uh, these structural mm. changes will have. Let's take the Essential Commodities Act for one. Yeah. You know, the uh, scrapping of uh, the act in a way that except for some 
nuclear emergencies, uh, uh, state governments will not be able to recklessly uh, tinker with the stockholding limits. So private sector will now be enthused to invest mm. in infrastructure, agri-infrastructure, mm. for which a fund is there. So there will be public funding, private sector investments will come in. And for the first time, we will see long-term returns coming from the agri-entrepreneurial mm. path. So definitely, I think the need is for farmers to not only remain as farmers, but to become businessmen. Mm. And the term is that agripreneur. Mm. So why not we have millions of agripreneurs and don't leave business to somebody else, the mm. farmer and the farmer cooperatives, their FPOs. I think that ripple effect uh, in the next six to uh, 12 months, you will see the uh, food processing. So this has to implement, and I think the step uh, which is being collected, will be very quickly deployed. Mm. So my sense is that the figures like was revealed in the budget, the kind of uh, things which are happening pan India, mm. I think that information or that, uh, that that's not reaching. Mm. And I think that uh, inflection point would come to maybe better communication with the farmers. True. My final question, we've got to press to take a short break. We're also waiting for the finance minister's uh, conversation with us. We're queuing that up. But uh, do you think this is one of the first steps towards block-level economics or district-level economics uh, as far as, uh, because that is critical for us as a country to grow. If you want to be on the path to self-reliance and five trillion economy, every block needs to be self-sustained. Absolutely. You bang on. If you, if you look at the aspirational district program, 112 districts at the block level, you know, on 49 indicators, the data is available. Mm. And the private sector is a partner in this initiative. It's right. not a government-funded program per se. You know, it's very clear. Right. The aspiration district program at the block level level is, right. uh, is involving communities. So they're able to see right. uh, what action they take and, and what kind of results they get. Indeed. I think that at the block level, you're absolutely right. That social capital is already there. Right. The kind of economic assets that are being you know, generated there. They have to only connect the dots with good logistics. The right. infrastructure is there. The data Mark connectivity, direct benefit transfers. 